for the briefing. Um, I just wanted to ask you a little bit to extend the deal. As for China, I'll tell you right now that we aren't discussing this topic with our partners from the People's Republic of China, including probably for purely pragmatic reasons based on the fact that we have a common border with China through which imports and exports have been established. And the Black Sea area is completely unnecessary for China to buy our grain from. As for the letter that yesterday the UN Secretary General handed to the President Putin about the grain deal, I hope that it has not been leaked because of his personal correspondence between the head of the UN and the head of a UN member state. If it were to be made public, this note, this would not have been a very decent thing to have happened. This would signify yet another attempt to put pressure on a situation that is not being resolved and which has been led into a dead end by our Western colleagues. Let me remind you that when this agreement of the Black Sea Initiative was signed on the 22nd of July last year, the text explicitly stated that it concerns the export of grain and ammonia. Nobody has given ammonia a second thought until the day before yesterday. Although Antonio Guterres told me yesterday that there is an acute shortage of fertilizers on the world market, primarily from the ammonia group. And if you've seen the statistics, less than 3% of the total volume of grain that passed from the Ukraine ports, less than 3% ended up in really poor countries that are on the corresponding list of the World Food Programme. That's Ethiopia's, Yemen's, Afghanistan, Sudan and, by the way, Somalia. The rest is more than 80% to high or upper middle class countries. We also pointed out that, focusing entirely on the Ukrainian part of the deal, our colleagues, mainly from the UN, forget that Antonio Guterres originally proposed a whole package that is linked together. I cannot say that the UN is not making an effort. No, on the contrary, Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of UNCTAD and Deputy Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, all are calling for that and are trying to negotiate with countries that have announced illegal unilateral sanctions against the Russian Federation, but there is practically no result. Rose Coal Bank, the main bank that serves our agricultural exports, is disconnected from SWIFT and no one is putting it back there. In return, we are offered some one-off alternatives. At the current stage, the full revival of this deal does not depend on Iran, on Russia or China. Those who destroyed it must bring it back to life. If there is a chance, it should happen this way. As agreed by President Biden and President Putin when they met in June 2021 in Geneva, a special channel has been created to discuss issues of detained Russian citizens in the United States and detained American citizens in the Russian Federation. I will not reveal a big secret if I tell you that this channel was not intended to involve journalists and did not intend to publicly expose certain situations in the interest of putting pressure on ongoing serious professional negotiations. In Russia, several American citizens are serving sentences for various crimes, including the people you mentioned. I mean, Paul Whelan and Ivan Gershakovich. They were detained while committing a crime, obtaining materials that constitute state secrets. And we do not accept loud, pathetic statements that a journalist, by definition, cannot commit a crime. No one remembers Julian Assange anymore. No one remembers our citizen journalist Maria Butina, who spent two years in prison in USA just because she was engaged in journalism and participated in the work of non-governmental organizations. We have about 60 people being imprisoned here in most cases. The accusations are dubious. There is a channel for discussing these things, and such work does not imply publicity. Publicity in this case can only complicate the process for obvious reasons. There is no need to explain this to professionals. Concerning Wagner, this is a private military company. We have repeatedly touched upon this issue, including in this room. A few years ago, our French colleagues and the head of diplomacy in the European Union, Joseph Borrell, issued grievances towards our links to Mali, Central African Republic. And they created some kind of a mini scandal in respect to the fact that the government of Mali, under circumstances, when the French began to withdraw their operations from the country and began to close their military bases in the north, where there were the main terrorist threat remained. And in this situation, the government of Mali, in order to not be left without defenses, they turned to the service of the private company called Wagner Group. Central African Republic and Mali and Sudan, a number of other countries whose governments, whose legitimate authorities turn for this kind of service, have the right to do so.